Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to Synchronicity Web TV. I am your host, Nadia Shaw, and this is your moment of synchronicity. Well, I'm so excited to celebrate with you today, Fernando Guimaras. Now, Nando and I actually go way back. Um, we have done volunteer work to strengthen the astrology community together over the course of years, and he is just out there as a brilliant uh, teacher and speaker. He is a preeminent Brazilian astrologer as well, and you may know if you've watched me as of the last year or two, how special uh, and spiritual Brazil is to me. So we're going to talk about that, but it is Nando who is coming to Synchronicity University as part of the March 2024 speaker series, where he's going to do his talk on solar arcs popular topic in astrology, uh, and you have a very limited time left now to choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class, an unheard of rate to learn from Nando, as you are about to see. Nando, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Nadia. I'm so happy to see you and hear you again, like face to face. Uh, and it's I, I'm thrilled to be invited. So I, I want to thank you very much for that opportunity and it's an honor and a privilege to be teaching at your university that is a jupiterian special place all over the world so this is really wonderful and needed in our community of professionals and students it is a wonderful thing to see how much the school has grown over the years i um launched the school in 2015 under Jupiter trine Uranus. So I really love Jupiter trine Uranus energy and uh, Jupiter Uranus in general, when there's good harmonious energies there. I, I like to tap into them professionally. And I think there've been these really big moments when I look back at now being a full-time astrologer for 17 years, the different ways I've been able to share astrology. So many of the times there's Jupiter and Uranus in some way or another. So I know this year we're going to have the conjunction of Jupiter and Uranus. So there's that. And so we'll see what we end up launching. But interestingly, just before we get there, you and I get to work together because you are coming to Synchronicity University. And so solar arcs, very popular topic. Tell me about solar arcs. What are they? Uh, how do you understand them? Because you've taught about them extensively. I know that. Yes. And uh, some people have like, uh, heard very little about the solar arcs. Uh, it's a tool not only for uh, forecast or predictive astrology, but also to help to either confirm or rectify uh, birth time. is really wonderful. And what I like the most is it's what we call here in Brazil. Uh, as many people know, Brazilian astrology have a strong influence from France. French astrology, but this is another topic we can talk later. Uh, solar arc directions in Brazil uh, received another name because it, it became uh, also uh, an option called uh, symbolic directions of, of arc. This means we don't basically, to begin with, uh, and clear, you know, the path of anxiety and fears to work with this uh, requires no special calculation. And you can do by just looking at the degrees of planets and angles ascendant. And some people, like I do, either I do math by fingers. So that helps too. You just need the natal charge to start doing uh, firsthand solar arc and try to as I said, confirm the birth time because of the planets that are very close to the ascendant or midheaven. And you can go from there, of course, using uh, other uh, tools like uh, secondary progression, transits. And the good thing is also for any students who, do, who knows a little to interpret the meaning of transiting planet transiting another one they can do interpretation of solar arc there is no mystery yeah it's very straightforward isn't it it's a degree a year that's what it comes down to the, yes the degree a year and you can see uh if you have a planet six degrees away of the ascendant in 
to the 12th house or the first house, that means when that person was six years old, something very important happened. If it didn't happen, it is uh, the birth time is, is out for one or two degrees or four or 10 minutes. You see how easy it is? Yeah, it can really help you to fine tune the exact birth time should you need that. Nando, I've also found it to be very important when you see, and you mentioned earlier, Frank Clifford. We love Frank here. Uh, Frank is very much connected to Synchronicity University. Uh, we at Synchronicity University did a joint uh, London School of Astrology, which he's the principal of, and Synchronicity University event. It, it was a weekend event a couple of years back. And of course, he's brilliant and one of the most celebrated astrologers in the world. Mm -hmm. But just the other day, I was seeing that he wrote uh, on his Instagram that when a solar arc planet is at 29, that can be a time of really big changes in a person's life. And I have found that to be so true. And so once again, you guys, solar arc method is a degree a year. So if you're born with, um, let's say your sun at zero degrees of Aries, making it super simple, uh, that means a degree a year, it is going to be at age 30 that the sun will move into the sign of Taurus. And it is a predictive technique. That's what it is. It's, it's just another layer to help you in interpretation. Um, but if you're born with your, your son at 10 degrees of Aries, it isn't, it, it's going to change signs into Taurus, uh, at 20 when you're 20 years old. So this really yeah. comes down to knowing your chart and knowing the degrees, but yeah, he was talking about this, uh, that 29 degree. What have you found with that, uh, important placement of a solar arc planet? Yes, because even, even if someone has a planet changing uh, the degrees and signs inside the same house, you start feeling that potent transformation of the same planet in a different zodiac way because it changed signs inside one house, in the same house. You know, uh, just like some, some transits do that, like Pluto now, zero degree Aquarius for many people is going to be in the same house, but vibrating in a different way. So that, this, you know, all, all the meaning of the house is going to change color, change vibration, not because of Pluto that has been there for years in the same house, but because it's changing sign. And something else that people don't talk much because we have so many different uh, house divisions, you know, you know, house systems. People don't notice uh, when a planet, they move out of the house. In solar arc, it's very visible, it's very potent because it takes like one year for that things to happen. Especially, you know, uh, I like to work with a very little orb, like uh, one year, half a year, six months, because that shows you, of course, a lot of people are sensitive for transitive progressions and solar arc, uh, many degrees away of the, you know, the right exact conjunction with the house cusp of planets. You know, people are sensitive, so I'm not closing that option. But when you see that is half degree or six months, a way of changing signs and changing house, you know, is like a tornado start happening uh, around the person. And it's real, it's symbolic, and it's real. Yes. And I'll say, I remember when Mars got to, I, I have a Mars in Gemini in my natal chart. Um, Mars got to 29 of Cancer. And my whole life changed, really. My my Saturn is at 28, 50 something. So my Saturn is almost uh, 29 of Cancer anyways. So Mars met that Saturn. And that year, I mean, really like my relationship of seven years ended. I moved to a whole other city. Um, my work changed in, in how I do it, how I uh, value it, the significance that I give to it. I mean, just so much changed for me. And this was in the first house also, so I should mention that. And, and that's what we mean, like when a solar arc planet is at the very end or changes signs, moves into a brand new sign, wow, those are huge life changes. 
uh, especially yeah. related to the energy of the planet itself. So the sun is identity, right? The moon is uh, your emotional reality and home. Um, Mars, for me, that was all about empowerment and action. Uh, personal planets are what it, it senses the most, you know. Uh, the generational aspect and planets also do too. But personal planets, you can just tell. And it was very interesting when you mentioned that. And I should say here, I should thank Frank Clifford because we had a little conversation about this in Boston. And I spoke about my research on mundane astrology when a, a slow planet uh, do this ingress, zero degree of a new sign. And because of that, he was so generous that he uh, asked permission to write that conversation in his book. And he wrote my name on the book. And then I almost have a heart attack because I said, that's an honor that I never had. And I never thought of having, you know, a colleague put in your name. And somebody in Boston said, oh, you don't need any curriculum. Just show the Frank's book with your name in it. <laughs> it's funny, but, I, you know, I don't want to go over the over the top but it was very why not of him. yeah because of course I, because i'm a 12 a 12 house guy so i should okay <laughs> well I, I will say frank clifford is generous and brilliant and beautiful inside and out and uh it makes total sense of course he would do that as as you are describing uh because of just who he is and how amazing he is and i want to mention something else that you spoke it's very yes. important can you believe that if, uh, either if you use solar arc and symbolic arc, mm -hmm. when it shows the beauty of the age 60, not only because if, you know, it's a Saturn and Jupiter uh, age mm -hmm. cycle, very important, but because at 60 year old, all the solar arc directed planets are in sextile 60 degrees with their natal position we should celebrate with the carnival and champagne 60 year old oh that is so important and that is something to look forward to uh yes. that makes so much sense yeah like 60 i i remember um my dad like the the saturn return happens around 56 57 right um, but at 60, you know, it's over, basically. I kind of found that with my first Saturn return as well. So we're talking about the second Saturn return here. But the first Saturn return, it happens around 28 and a half. But at 30, you kind of know it's over. And that's just when the, uh, the, the trine Uranus, uh, trine Uranus in your chart starts kicking in. But at 60, as you're mentioning, you have your Jupiter return. And that's when you feel your Saturn return behind you. And what I found was, I remember my dad, when he was having a Saturn return, he kind of went into a depression. And I remember my mom talking to me about it. And she said, you know, it's not about the things that didn't work. It's about the things that he didn't try. And that's really what it's about. So she was so adamant that I try everything. That's when she went through a big change as well, where she was like, you know, live, experience, do live your life fully, basically, is, is how she put it. Just try everything you want to try. But I think, yeah, when he was 60, that's when it felt like he kind of snapped out of it. And that was really nice to see as well. But it makes sense that you also take into consideration the fact that your solar arc planets are sextiling the natal planet, that's incredible to consider. All of them. So, of course, if the planets and angles, they have like good aspect when you are, uh, are born, they are going to have this potentialized uh, aspect. Uh, and we should celebrate that, not the hard aspect, uh, you know, not to deny it, but just say, well, I'm strong and I'm happy, you know, at 60 because it's a new chance a new chance to reveal all of that potential. And I always tell my students and uh, friends and clients, they say, well, now I'm a Sag, so don't come here crying baby with me about planets and malefics and squares because you just have to see it. If a, if a planet is a square and not a planet, wait some years, they're going to be trying. 
after a square, there is a train. After wow. a train, there is a King Kong's bit sad, but just one day, because soon you're going to have, you know, they, after an opposition 180 degrees, there is another train 210 degrees. And then this is the way we go. People say, oh, I'm six square, 45 degrees of it. A sextile, six degrees around the corner. So Fox on that, not on the 45 degrees. Yeah. You don't, oh you my don't God. Think this is a good way to view it, the, the aspect. So it is so Sagittarian. My Sagittarius <laughs> yeah. moves, moon loves it. Yeah. It's the cosmic wisdom you have to channel. Nadia, please, we need more of that with professionals and students, you know, uh, not only in astrology, but in philosophy, literature, and, and religion, because, you know, after a storm, you have that beautiful, even after that tragic, uh, you know, the tsunami, uh, Asian tsunami, terrific, like two or three days later, there was like a beautiful day, sunny and the calm ocean. And of course, everybody was traumatized. But you see, after a storm, it comes a good times. And we should not just lay back and forget the hard work just because we're living in a trine and sextile. And it's a good weather at the beach. You have to watch longer enough to see if a storm is coming and be prepared. This is life. We are not going to change it. We are not going to change our planet, the weather, or uh, unless you do like the magical, you know, uh, uh, indigenous dance, you know, like the, the people from Mexico and they really do some strong special dance, the Caribbean, and they can talk to the elements. But this is not astrology. So let's not go get into that, you know, the magical way of a mind. But I say collectively, we really should be careful in, in the here now to be prepared, but also not to dwell in those tragic, because then we don't move forward. We do not move forward. This you is my are, message. I love it. I love your message. I resonate with your message. You are so brilliant. Uh, and all you guys out there, you can see just how much love, but also wisdom and knowledge Nando brings. And it is Nando who is coming to Synchronicity University as part of the March 2024 speaker series. You've got just a little bit of time left to choose your tuition rate, as always, just $5 a class to learn from Nando and other incredible astrologers as well. Nando, I loved this moment with you. I love celebrating you. I love getting to know you better. Uh, thank, thank you, you so much for being here. Thank you, Nadia. And you know, the best of life and, and success for you and all your um, empowerment. And let's wait where you're going to come up with Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus. I see, but I cannot tell. <laughs> That is happening so close to my south node. And it is sextile, my midheaven. So something's got to give. Something's got to happen. Something's got to give for sure. Uh, yeah, it's sextile, my midheaven. It's, uh, yeah, it's doing some interesting things. It's trine, my mercury. So yeah, good things I think are going to happen. But I like focusing on that, right? Isn't it a good thing that we say, good things are going to happen because they do. And like you said, and I love that you said, life has challenges. Life has pain. Like this is the world that we have. We've co-created it together on some spiritual level, but this is what it is. But you can look to astrology and look to yourself and tap into the universal Sag energy and see what actually could be really good, whether it's right now or it's going to come up because it always comes up. Always something can be good. Always something can be better, more healed. It can improve. Uh, and that's one of the gifts of life, right? That we constantly can move forward. Especially, Nadia, and if we do this collectively, either even either just by, you know, next to just one good friend or three or five or 10, family, student, friends, colleagues. Now you can imagine a whole community a whole collective of people you know working together it's it is of course something good is going to happen because i my faith also believes that you know we are designed uh we are designed for creation 
for progress, for the good. But I don't want to see Pollyanna to be Pollyanna and say, you know, and deny all the other things because it's, it's like light and shadow, day and night. We have a lot of, uh, you know, a, a lot of uh, uh, mysteries to, uh, to uncover. And I think we are going to do that with Pluto in Aquarius. Neptune in Aries after a hundred years is gonna. I'm waiting for Neptune in Aries. You cannot believe it. Well, because people say, Oh, it has been you know 12 years, 13 years that Jupiter met Uranus in, in, um, but it was another zodiac sign in exactly. Taurus. It was 84 years ago. We win, we were not here. So, this is our time, it's our conjunction. You know? Wow. I love that. So we own it. Like, like it, it is about understanding whatever aspects happen. They are a part of you as part of your individual journey. So yeah, own it. This is ours as a collective, but it's also yours as well. Hey, you see, this is freedom. We can just wait to be passive on lookers and waiting to see like in the parade or you say, oh no, I want to help. And then you jumped into the conjunction, you jump into the times, and you and you do something, you see. And I'm not gonna be judgmental, you know, because we 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 know that we have you know uh, uh, energetic signs and more passive uh, introvert signs and everybody. The four temperaments, you know, we have the choleric that the, go do it, and we have the party, um, the sanguine and melancholic and all the other ones so uh but the opportunity is there for everyone incredible tap into those opportunities for sure so those opportunities can be the transits right now but those opportunities are also understanding your solar arcs and the big opportunities that they present when a solar arc planet is aspecting your uh, natal planet and of course with its action in and of itself and so so Nando, I do want to talk to you about Brazil because Brazil is so special uh, and I'm really interested in exploring the astrology here with you and, and just what makes it such a magical place. Brazil is, is um, it's special. It is special. And I really have loved Rio very, very much. I was just here like in May. I spent three months here. I left in May and I couldn't wait to get back. And I, I came back uh, at the beginning of January. You so see, I can see that. I hope yeah. in the future, you know, in the years ahead until the end of this, uh, uh, this, uh, how do you say that? Uh, uh, I forgot how to say that the 10 years period just you know from 2020 to 2030 oh the decade can, oh the decade i hopefully and i ask the gods and goddesses that give me permission to show you the rest of brazil because we have five different countries inside this huge country in the northeast north south and west center you have to see and that it, I do. I do. I would love to. I love to explore in general, but yes, I know that there's so much more to see outside of Rio. I, I come to Rio and I just start dancing and going to the beach and, and that's it's all that happens. It's addictive. You know, it's addictive. It's you not know, like in the yeah. 60s. It was like the, it was like the French Rivera. You know the Cote d'Azur, because all the, the 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 stars, Hollywood star, will come here to Carnival Rio, from Hollywood, from Brigitte Bardot, and all those places. You know, it's something in Rio really attracts, you know, people, solar people, Venusian, Jupiterian. And what do you think is the um, astrological connection. I mean, one thing somebody pointed out the other day is that carnival happens uh, during Aquarius season, basically. It is Aquarius oh. season. Yeah, and which Pisces. is... I think and more, yeah, it dips Pisces. into Pisces a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, right. Because you see... Because it's yeah, February. And, and yeah. Brazil, uh, the, the Independence Day chart has uh, 25 Aquarius and in like plus... 
uh, almost uh, 20 degrees of Pisces in the first house. So Carnival is always first house of Brazilian chart. For me, you know, the, the clowns, the music, the dance, the freedom, the fantasy world is Pisces. For me, this is Carnival, this is Rio. You can even see on the sidewalks of Copacabana, you know, that symbols of waves. This is Neptunian, my go goodness. And the Christ Redeemer, do you want something more Neptunian and Jupiterian Pisces like that? That is so perfect. Yes, it's, it's such an icon of the country, the Christ the Redeemer. But of course, here, you come to Rio, everybody wants to see that as well. Yeah, the Christ Redeemer but statue. go to Sao Paulo is typically Aquarian town. Oh my goodness. Is business, business, and mind, mind. And if you go to Brasilia, the act, the you know nowadays, nowadays the capital is very Aquarius too. If you see from an airplane, it was projected to the the city. The city is the body of an airplane with two wings. It's a bird of an airplane. This is Aquarius. Incredible, and I mean that might be part of the energy of freedom that I feel when I'm here as an Aquarius sun. So it just ends up being validating to that. So that could speak to my connection, but I'm not surprised that so many people are drawn to uh, Rio in particular. That's what I know. But yeah, Brazil is special. I think that's the fourth time I'm saying that so far in this conversation, but there is something very special here. Um, of course, there's a lot of biodiversity and there's these different climates, as you mentioned, um, but there's an there's an ease and an embodiment among the people uh, that I find really beautiful as well. And the African spirituality is um, something that's very special here, how much it's been sort of acclimated into the mass culture in a way that you don't see in other parts of the Americas, not in this way. Um, like we were just mentioning earlier, uh, Yamanja. So she has her birthday here. Um, and I think her birthday is February 2nd. Am I right? February 2nd. And so the, the whole country basically goes to the sea and gives because flowers. Of the yeah. The large Atlantic coast. Yes. They go There's to the a, sea. Yes. The boats. A huge percentage of the country takes part in this ritual where all along this extended coast, you will see flowers thrown, wishes made, and people very aware of the power of the sea. And when I went uh, to this um, moment, if you will, to, to be part of this cultural moment this year, I saw so many people like just sort of with their hands up at the sea, trying yes. to connect and wanting to connect with her energy saying a prayer, saying a hail to her or something. And this is an African goddess. And I love how yes, she's so you know, incorporated. I you know that this syncretism, with the, because even Catholic, they go, they leave the church and go to the ocean with the African tradition. So this mix is very Neptunian, is very Pisces, and a little bit of Sagittarius. So you don't care your background. So let's, uh, you know, let's have fun and let's have faith. You yes, know, I, this is peaceful. yes, I love uh, the diversity of the people. It's wonderful. I, I am. We are in the north of Brazil here in Rio. Um, but yes, it is incredible to see what diversity of people and different backgrounds. But there's this um, celebration and integration of African spiritualities. And uh, of course, like you said, Catholicism and, and how it has influenced how Lens. Catholicism is practiced and understood here as well. Yeah. yeah, even the priests they accept that it's a blending that you know I I don't see. I haven't traveled much, but I don't see much in, on the internet uh, uh, happening in the whole world. You know, this understanding and blending of faith and spirituality, spirituality at least to the level of respect. But it's in Rio. It's uh, that was once the capital city of Brazil and the first capital city of Brazil in Bahia. It's also it's a African consulate. Actually, you know, you go to Salvador, Bahia, you are in Africa and you have to see this Scorpio, magical Neptune, Pluto energy of Africa in Bahia. You have to go. 
I know a lot of people have told me that too. And I actually know my, uh, I have a brother-in-law, my, well, kind of my aunt's husband's brother actually lives in Bahia. And I didn't know that I was kind of like, wow, really? But he loves it there. This is a person I've never met, but I'm connected to through family in some way who feels uh, that level of love and connection to to Brazil and to Bahia as well. So I thought that was fascinating. Yeah, you are going to free you're going to feel at home. You know, it's the home of famous Brazilian singers. You know that. You know the popular Brazilian music, it's from Salvador, you know. Uh, Gilberto Gil and Caetano and all those uh, girls, you know, like the 60s, the hippies of the 60s is a wonderful place. I want to go back. And there is a, a, a very thriving astrological community there. You have to see. Oh, that'll be great to see as well. Once again, Nando's going to talk all about that in his class on solar arcs uh, and, at Synchronicity University. Yeah. And Nadia, Nadia, I promise the students that come to this, I, I can call it workshop, webinars or whatever, little class, I promise they finish. And if they bring their chart with a pencil or a pen, they are going to apply right away, less than two hours. They are going to wow. learn some uh, new messages from the solar arc. Because it's not just about the sun. It's not about the ascendant, the angles, and the you know, anything that you see in a chart, like, you know, like Venus and Mercury uh, in conjunction, you know, uh, seven degrees away, when per the person is seven years old, is going to fall in love with a colleague in, you know, in elementary school, is going to win a prize of writing a composition. And you can just look and say seven degrees, Mercury and Venus, seven year old, that's it. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's really, you're able to apply it right away. And I know solar arcs are like one of the oldest um, progression techniques. We see like these ancient astrologers, we see the, the, uh, the Arab astrologers in particular, I'm thinking about applying and using um, the solar arc method of progression for prediction. And this is going back a thousand years. So yeah, it's very tried and true. Uh, people powerful. love it and I love it. Yeah, very powerful to consider. Oh, I'm happy. Me too. I'm so happy and I'm happy we got this time together. And I'm happy for everybody out there for watching. Thank you so much for that as well. Uh, and until we connect again, take care. And remember, catch Nando at synchronicityuniversity.com. You can learn a lot more about his talk, sign up, all that good stuff there. Thank you again, Nando. I adore you. Mm -hmm.